everybody welcome back to my kitchen as you can see we're not outside right now it is i think it's in the 30s and so i did i did go out there to see if well i didn't want to do it in my coat so i just want to welcome you all back to my camper um, for those of you who are new here and i know we have a lot of new people um, we're up to 24,000, almost 25,000 subscribers now so for those of you who have not been here before or just recently joined in, let me catch you up. Um, we are in the foothills of the Cumberlachian Mountains um, on top of a mountain ourselves. And that's what we came up with the name for our channel and for our, basically for our homestead. It's Cumberlachia. Um, we just combined Cumberland Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains came up with Cumberlachia. So we got the Cumberlachia Homestead. Right now we have... Well, we have seven, about seven acres out here, and for, of course, most of you already know that, but the new ones, we're um, basically on top of a mountain. We had to clear about, we got about a half an acre, maybe three quarters of an acre cleared. We're going to be putting a cabin um, just right across from here where we have the camper right now. I am living in my camper. It's a eight by, well, eight or ten, ten by twenty. It's very small we've been in this for well in may it will be two years and it's basically done everything we've needed we've went through last winter and it was got i mean wind chill was like 20 below around christmas when we had that bad storm come in and the lines water lines started to freeze but i got them thawed out we have electric water hoses we have all that so not only do we have um our solar generator we have a blue eddy solar generator and that keeps us going that's what we've been using to power all of our electric um, battery powered tools and other electric around here and we also have a dual power um, generator dual fuel generator not dual power and we can use propane or gasoline on that so we're, we're pretty good up here um, it's totally different from down in living in fort lauderdale in south florida for last 10 years and tampa 25 years but i can't tell you how much i love it up here it's just i feel like i'm at home i feel comfortable i feel I feel like i'm next to god it's just it's beautiful here so today i'm going to even bring you up to date more we do have our first animals on the uh homestead for those of you who've been following along on facebook and i think instagram i put some stuff and my uh community page here we have quail we started raising quail and a lot of people have asked me why we're raising quail first why didn't we go with chickens well if i bought i wanted to hatch my own to begin with i want to start from scratch and if you hatch chickens it could take six to eight months before they start laying once you hatch them and then it could be six months to a year depending on the breed before you can actually harvest them for meat and i'm trying to be as self-sufficient up here as we can be so i started looking into some other birds and quail came up and i checked that out um it takes 17 days to hatch a quail 17 to 21 days to hatch a quail it took us 19 i think ours started hatching on the 19th day um and they start laying within six to eight weeks so i think they're nine weeks old now and this is what's left of the let's see i've already given away about six dozen eggs They've already started laying eggs, and they're now nine weeks old. They're almost ten weeks old, so they're they're we're able to actually, if we want to, start harvesting them for meat, and we will be doing that soon. But right now, they're just kind of, you know, I've raised them since baby, so I don't want to do that right yet, but I will. So these are our quail eggs, and as you can see, they're about a third of the size of a chicken egg. In fact, it takes three or four quail eggs equal one chicken egg but i have seven hens i have seven roosters so my seven hens are giving me an egg a day right now a lot of times this time of year because the daytime's shorter they're not going to get as many eggs or they may even stop but i hung i've i cheated i looked on uh facebook and some of the quail raising groups and they said give a little bit of extra artificial light and you can even use christmas lights so i hung some white christmas lights in front of my um cages on the brooder i'll put a picture here this is what I, um not brooder it's a hutch <laughs> this is the hutch we have and we built that and that's where i have the um birds at so at night they get from 5 30 till 10 o'clock i think the christmas lights come on so they are still laying now i did notice this week that they are starting to molt so 
which if you don't know raising chickens and any kind of birds molding just means they're losing some feathers to getting new feathers in i think they should have done a long time ago because it's in the 30s now but they're just starting to mold so i may start drop off start dropping off on our egg production and if i do i'm going to take the lights down and just let them go through the winter and then in the spring they can start again but i thought since we have quail eggs and everybody wants to know what i'm doing with my quail and quail eggs we're going to make some eggnog I'm going to use quail eggs instead of chicken eggs. Uh, now, usually I'd use six chicken eggs, but since I don't have chicken eggs, we're going to be using, what is that, 18 quail eggs? Maybe I might do 20. I don't, I don't know how many I have left in here. I got a couple dozen in the free refrigerator that I've already cleaned to take to work to some people. But I'm just going to turn on my induction cooktop. We're going to put it on medium. And to do this, we're going to start with two cups of just sweet milk and this is milk i got at the store we haven't got our goats yet that should be our next animal we're gonna get some goats and have them here so i'll be getting fresh goat milk and making cheese butter all that good stuff even even soap so we're going to put a cup of milk in here we're going to put three cloves i mean not a cup of milk i'm sorry two cups of milk we're going to put three whole cloves in there, and then we'll fish those out at the end. Oops, four. We did four this time. So we got the cloves in there, and I need to put a teaspoon of cinnamon. And you can also put about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. I don't care for nutmeg in my eggnog, so I'm just going to be putting the cinnamon in there. And give that a little stir to mix it up. Let's use a slotted one so we get some circulation going there. We're just going to bring this to a boil. So I'm going to get that going. I'll leave that there. That's all we're going to put in there right now. We're just going to let that come to a boil. In the meantime, we're going to do our eggs. And with the eggs, I need a cup of sugar. So this is a third of a cup measuring. So there's one two and three so there's my cup of sugar and this is where we put our six eggs in but instead we're going to stand here and we're going to crack these now something interesting about quail eggs is they're kind of brittle so when you crack them you could get a piece that would actually break down in there i'll show you i can i can break them easily but see that it starts coming apart so let me get a little dish here to put my eggshells in this one I will finish but then I'm going to show you a trick so there's the first one and a piece of shell did go down in there so I'm going to get it out there's another little piece of shell don't worry my hands are clean and they're getting ready to be cleaned again so you can get what's called Quail egg scissors. They're not really quail egg scissors. They're cigar scissors. I had seen these a lot when I was down in South Florida, Miami, because a lot of the Cuban Americans down there smoke cigars, and they just cut off the ends of the cigars to start. Well, guess what? They work perfectly for quail eggs. So if you take the quail egg and pointy end up, stick down in there, just clip it. You clip off the top, dump out the egg. That's all there is to it works magically let me get all these done but yeah i've been cooking with our quail eggs and love the taste of them i think they taste a little richer than a chicken egg there's all kinds of wonderful benefits from quail eggs um i'll put a actually i'll put it up on the community page and my facebook page so you can see it i met a gentleman at tractor supply that worked there i was talking about raising the quail and he said that he used to raise quail when his brother was alive his brother had diabetes and he used to take have to take three shots a day um insulin shots for his diabetes he said he started giving him quail eggs to eat and the quail meat and the quail eggs he said he went down to one shot a day now this is just what i told he told me but i started looking it up on the internet and md.com and a bunch of different places and there are a tremendous um, a lot of tremendous a lot no well there's a lot of benefits for 
eating quail eggs. So I'm happy with it. And I'm standing here. Did any of you guys count how many I did so far? Because I didn't. Let's start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're up to eight. We got time because we're waiting for the milk to boil. There's ten. Oh, that one's a little bit light. I don't know if you guys can see these or not. How bright and beautiful those eggs are. How orange. There is one yellow one in there. Must be a, one of the new ones. Some of the hens just started laying. But these eggs are so beautiful and orange. Not like them chicken eggs I'm getting at the store. So 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I will put down in my uh, Amazon store a link to all of the uh, scissors and different things that I use for the quail eggs. From hatching to eating to harvesting. And you know what? I'm going to, whoops, we got, we got boilage over here. So I'm going to turn this off. All we want to do is bring it to a boil. We don't want to scald it. Stand here talking about my quail eggs, which I love. And I totally forgot about this. Okay, so we're just going to let this cool now. I'll bring the temperature down a little bit. I'm going to set it over here so it can cool. And we're going to finish the eggs. I guess I should have counted again. Mom says I should save these and do some kind of little art thing with them or hobby thing. They are beautiful. Each one is just a little bit different color. They do have blue. Some of them are blue. There's our celadon. This means that the uh, quail had a celadon gene in it and their eggs are literally blue. I did have some blue ones. They did not hatch, unfortunately. So I will be raising those. Um, I'll be selling the eggs at the farmer's market because I'm looking in January to get about 50 to 75 more eggs to hatch in the incubator. And then by March, when the farmer's markets all start up again, I'll have eggs to sell. Because a lot of people I've talked to around here said they'd really like to be able to get some quail eggs. So I figured it'd be perfect. And we're going to count again. 4, 6, or 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Let me I think I'm going to do 20 because some of these are a little small since they just started laying. Like I said, I'm getting seven. Yesterday I got eight. I don't know. One of them girls is an overachiever because I went out in the morning. There were no eggs. I fed them. I'm not just going to put two away. I'll just do the rest of them. Just makes it a lot richer. But I got eight eggs out of seven hens. You see how easy that is? Everybody thinks it's so hard when I tell them about how small they are and they have to crack them. Easy to do. Beautiful eggs. So let me set those aside. Set this and our scissors over here. And I'm just going to bring this together. You know what? I'm going to try just using a fork. Because I just want to cream these beautiful eggs. Look at those. I don't know if you can see how beautiful that is. I'll show you right here on the side camera. They are just so good. Now, one thing you, about quail eggs. The ratio of yellow to white is a little bit different than a chicken egg. Because of being so small. The yolk, there's a little bit more yolk in the quail egg than there is white in comparison. So when you use three quail eggs to one chicken egg, you're going to have more yolk in your mixture than you would with the one chicken egg. And that just makes your baked goods so much richer and creamier. Get this all whipped up. Gosh, it's not even yellow. It's like orange. I just love the color of these yolks. And I'm going to be doing some sprouted um, seeds so I can give them some fresh sprouts. And that will just make it even greener. But the feed that I give them has all the nutrients and everything they need. Okay, so there's that. Let me move my little induction cooktop back here. Set it down out of the way. And that's good now. I'm just going to put a little bit at a time of this heated milk into the eggs. I don't want to put it all at once because you can scramble the eggs. You guys understand that. I'm going to steal my little scooper out of here. So I'm going to do what we call tempering them. Just put a little bit at a time in here. Get that out of the way. 
and just start increasing the temperature of the eggs, but not cooking them. We'll let you right there. You know what? I'm going to get rid of that and I'm just going to slowly stream this into here. All right, we're more than half and half, so I can just go ahead and dump the rest in there. All the cinnamon. Oh, that's starting to smell good already. Now, since these are fresh eggs, it's going to look a lot richer than a lot different color than regular eggnog. I did leave the uh, whites in here. Usually I take the whites out and just do just the yolks, but I left the whites in here just to give it a little bit more frothy texture. But when you do it with, and I'll put the entire recipe down below with all the instructions. When you do it with chicken eggs, usually you're using only the yolk. But with this being heated, this is basically cooking, pasteurized cooking the eggs so they're nice and safe. Okay, so now that's nice and incorporated. So now we're going to bring this back up to temperature. We're not going to boil. I just want to have a little bit of a bubble to it to get it nice and cooked. So pour it back in here. And turn this bad boy back on. And I'm just going to put it on medium. And I am going to literally stand here and stir this because I do not want this to boil. Got a little clump of cinnamon in there that clumped up. But I'll be, you guys are going to see, until I get chickens, and I am getting chickens, but until I do get chickens, I'm going to be using my quail eggs. have no reason not to. The girls are giving them to me. I'm going to get this chunks of cinnamon out here that coagulated or clumped up. There we go. Start heating this. And then finally to this, all we're going to do is add some heavy cream two cups of heavy cream which 16 ounces yes i got 16 ounces i'm good and a little vanilla i'm using vanilla bean paste and then you can drink it at that point i make mine with either rum or whiskey so i'm going to just make it plain today and then i can add the rum or the whiskey as i go but i want to take this in to share it with everybody at work they wanted to see what it tasted like so I'm not going to put the whiskey or rum in there because I don't think it's a good idea we'd be drinking at work. Well, I think it's a good idea, but you know the bosses don't think it's a good idea. Okay, I just want to get this just so it starts to bubble. In fact, let me get a spoon because we want it to thicken up and coat the back of our spoon. So I'll get that out. Just keep stirring this a little bit longer. All right. You check with a spoon just draw a line down there still a little bit running so we're gonna go a little bit longer I'm seeing some bubbles around the edges so I'm just want to keep an eye on it starting to get some bubbles now all around the side and it's looking to me like it's perfect so let's turn this off see if you run your finger down that it stays clear this is nice and thick now. I'm going to remove it from the heat because I don't want it to cook and coagulate. We'll move this over. One thing about living in a camper, you learn how to move everything back and forth to use what you need to use. Okay, we're going to wait about five minutes and I'll be back. We're going to let this cool down. We don't want to put the, mil the heavy cream and the vanilla in there yet we want it to cool down so we'll be back in just a few minutes okay so i'm back i did transfer from the hot pan over into a bowl helps it cool a little quicker keeping a hot pan is not going to do that so it's about room temperature now and i i will tell you i snuck a little taste it's nice and sweet and tastes good 
So now we're just going to add in the last two things that you put in. And that's two cups of heavy cream. It's going to make it just as more thick and rich and delicious. And before I get all that mixed in, I'm going to put in probably about a teaspoon. And that's a teaspoon of regular vanilla. I'm using a paste, vanilla paste. So maybe three squirts. We'll just get this here. Now you could use a blender if you wanted to do this, but I'm not going to get it out and dirty it up and make all that noise. Hmm. This is coming together real nice. And like I said, regular eggnog might be a little bit lighter in color, but from they're not using fresh farm eggs, and I am, and my quail give me some beautiful yellow yolks. So it is a little bit of a different tint than you would see if you bought eggnog at the store. I'm not even sure if they're using real eggs. Okay, so there is our eggnog. It is all put in. I'm going to get to me some. Actually, you know what? The rest I'm going to take to work, but this one's my little taste. So I'm going to put a little my Gentleman Jack in here. Because I do like my Gentleman Jack. I think the Tennessee... Honey, uh, honey whiskey would be really good in here because the sweetness and the honey taste. So I'm just going to get some of this put in. Do -do -do -do. And grab a paper towel. Because I'm making a mess. I already did that over there. Made a little mess on the dripping when I first started doing it. There we go. And let's mix that up. I'll make that whiskey get mixed in there real good. Guess I'll be enjoying the rest of my day. Give it a taste. Mm -hmm. As mom would say, let's go for seconds. That is delicious. So creamy, so rich. Those. I'm going to brag on my quail eggs. Those quail eggs are so nice and rich. I can taste it. It's just nice thickness. And of course, that gentleman Jack back there is just warming it up a little bit. Mm. Y'all got to try this. If you like eggnog, you're going to love homemade eggnog. You see how simple that was to put together? You can put it in the refrigerator. It'll keep about two weeks, maybe. Um, I'm just going to jar this up in some mason jars quart jars maybe a pint maybe not as much because i might be drinking this the rest of the afternoon because this is good it's cold outside and that's wonderful everything in here is fresh everything you know where it came from you get your uh, eggnog at the store it's going to have all them preservatives and chemicals in there and it's just not going to taste as good and thick and rich so give this a try i hope you guys are having a wonderful beautiful christmas season don't forget the reason we're here and the reason for the season. Um, I appreciate all of you. I can't thank you guys enough. Mom and I, and I, I got to thank Mom too because Mom has stepped up and done so many more videos because we have been so busy. If I don't think I have mentioned it earlier, but this is our 8x20 camper right here. We are building on a, I don't know what it is, 10x12. It's a big room we're building onto the camper gonna be knocking this wall out right here so we'll have a little bit more space to actually move around in here and brody who's laying down here watching actually brody's down here sleeping he's ignoring me right now um but he usually he's my he's my audience but um we're going to be able to have a little bit more space to get around in here and that'll be nice until we get the camper started this or the uh cabin started this spring so again i appreciate you guys we love you to death. Mom, thank you for doing all the extra videos for me so we could get all the stuff done out here we've been doing. It's getting cold outside now, so a lot more of my videos are going to be in here. I still think I'm going to sneak out there and I'm going to do some chili over the campfire um, with my big old cast iron pot. I've got all my cast iron out in the workshop, and there's just no room in here for them right now. So I'm going to bust out the big old Dutch oven and hang it over there, uh, fire, and we're going to do a 
some kind of chili. I think it's my Tennessee moonshine chili. You guys are going to like that. If you do want a sneak peek, you can go over to my website. I do have it on the website already, uh, gregstashkitchen.com. That's also where I'm going to be putting this recipe, and it'll be down in the description below. So everything will be there. I can't quit looking at this stuff. This stuff is good. So I'm going to let y'all go because I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Y'all have a great day. Thank you so much. God love you and take care.